Okay, let's continue with our discussion on water pollution. We're exploring different types of water pollutants, and one major category are what we call toxic heavy metals. We're very concerned about toxic heavy metals because of their human health implications. Most metals are relatively harmless. However, there is a handful of them that can have a severe impact on human health. Arsenic and cadmium, for example, as well as chromium, are both known, or all three of them are known, to be what we call carcinogens. Carcinogens are chemicals that cause cancer. Today we're going to explore lead and mercury. Lead and mercury are both neurotoxins. Neurotoxins are chemicals that affect the central nervous system. Of course, this includes the brain, the spinal cord, as well as the peripheral nerves. Impacts associated with to the nervous system and toxicity that affects the nervous system can affect behavior, depression, cause learning disabilities, retardation, ADD, blindness, deafness, and can even lead to paralysis and in some circumstances, death. So let's start with mercury. Mercury, of course, is a unique metal in that at room temperature, it exists as a liquid. It has some major anthropogenic sources. These are human-derived sources. Of course, mercury is naturally occurring, but two-thirds of it come from human activity. The number one source is coal combustion. Coal, in many ways, is a very dirty fossil fuel and it spews great quantities of mercury, elemental mercury. Why that's important is because, well, of course, elemental mercury doesn't break down in the environment. It's persistent. Ultimately, this persistent allows it to accumulate and magnify in food webs and continue to wreak havoc. Various mining processes, batteries, and fluorescent light bulbs also are known to contain mercury. At the site of emissions where coal combustion is occurring, elemental mercury is spewed into the atmosphere. These particles of mercury can then travel great distances when they get caught in wind currents. Eventually, that elemental mercury, that inorganic mercury, will fall out of the sky. It'll fall as dry fall or perhaps with precipitation. When and if this finds its way into aquatic systems, it undergoes a change. It goes from inorganic mercury to organic methyl mercury. This is accomplished by the process methylation where anaerobic bacteria convert it to organic mercury. Now that it's organic, it's capable of being absorbed by the fatty tissue in living organisms and therefore it's capable of accumulating in living organisms and then when those organisms are consumed and passed up through the food web between trophic levels mercury will start to magnify in fact it can magnify to the point where it can be very lethal or harmful to human health at higher trophic levels large predatory fish are well known to contain high concentrations of mercury. And as a result, humans are typically advised not to consume these predatory fish, especially pregnant women who are carrying infants or with a newborn, uh, because ultimately breast milk is very fatty in origin and in nature, and as a result, it's going to accumulate and store uh, a, a good amount of harmful mercury which will be then passed on to the newborn. And of course, it's the newborn that's still developing and growing and without a well-developed immunity. The toxicity and the health effects associated with mercury uh, became well-documented in the 1950s in a small town called Minamata, Japan. The Chiso Corporation was undergoing a variety of industrial processes and as a byproduct, they emitted vast quantities of mercury 
into the surrounding aquatic ecosystem. Of course, this mercury was converted to organic mercury, where it then accumulated and magnified through the food web. The population of Minamata, Japan, had a fairly strict diet of seafood, eating a lot of predatory fish. There were all of a sudden large outbreaks in the population of what became known as Minamata disease. Of course, this is not a disease that you can catch. It's not infectious necessarily. It's a result of the toxicity of mercury. And many people died or developed paralysis, blindness, and mental retardation. Moving on to lead, another toxic heavy metal which causes neurological damage. Uh, we have lead that can be found in a variety of antiquated infrastructure. Most of this infrastructure has been banned in the United States. For example, we no longer produce lead-based pipes, lead-based paint. Our automobiles are no longer run on leaded gasoline, but it's still in our environment. And a lot of the infrastructure hasn't been replaced. A lot of our pipes still contain lead, of course. And of course, this was widely documented a few years ago in Flint, Michigan, where the city was changing its water source from Lake Huron and the Detroit River to the Flint River. Along with this conversion, a few shortcuts were made. The infrastructure was antiquated, it was old, it was still lead-based, and there are ways to work around that. There are certain chemicals that the water treatment company can utilize to mitigate the impacts of lead poisoning. For example, the chemical orthophosphate can be used in lead-based pipes. And what this chemical does is it binds with the lead to create uh, sort of a coating which keeps the lead in place and prevents the lead from leaching out of the pipes and contaminating the water that's passing through it. Well, they sort of jumped over this step as a cost-cutting cut strategy. And as a result, the concentrations of lead were very high in the people's drinking water. A few years after this conversion, it was well noted that many children had elevated levels in their bloodstream of lead, and they were starting to suffer from all sorts of neurological problems. That's it for today, guys. We'll see you next time.